Hi, so I will be talking about um, Lemon Set Infinity, which and it will show us the end behavior, and this is uh, section 5. So, infinite limits tell us something about the end behavior of a function. And usually when we're dealing with infinite limits, we're dealing with rational functions. And some guidelines that we can follow is when we're dealing with them, we can divide each term. Uh, so everything in the function by the power of x, uh, the highest power of x in the denominator. And then with that, we can find the new limit, and which will give us a new form. Well, the reason why we do this, though, is because when we're dealing with rational functions, we have indeterminate forms that we cannot... Um, figure out what the limit will be and it's usually when we get stuff that is infinity over infinity and that does not equal one because we don't know which infinity is bigger so it's indeterminate or infinity minus infinity and that also does not equal zero because it's indeterminate we don't know which infinity is bigger if we have infinity plus infinity that just equals infinity because it, it just keeps getting bigger it, but they have to be the same sign so um, so when finding limits at infinities, we have some simple, um, three simple, like, uh, rules. And uh, if the degree of a numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, so we have x over x squared, then the rational function will end up being zero. And if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, which is x squared over x squared, then the ratio of the leading coefficient, then the limit is the ratio of the leading coefficients. And if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the numerator, um, the denominator, x uh, to the third over x squared, then the limit does not exist. And I'll also be talking about horizontal and sine asymptotes, and I'll be showing you which ones are each. Sine asymptotes are a little more confusing, so here is exactly what they are. Um, so an asymptotes occur when the degree of the numerator is only one, not any more, just one larger than the degree of the denominator. And horizontals are just when we get the limit with the number, and that's just a line. So, number 15 of section 5. So, um, I've pretty much written everything out to just go through it a little easier. So it asks us to simply um, find the limit of h of x, and it gives us f of x, and it puts it over uh, x squared. So each time I just simply divided um, the uh, highest power of um, the denominator, which is always just one uh, little uh, x, uh, to the entire function. So then this in, the, in a, I uh, divided it out, and I ended up getting, um, or simplified it out, and I ended up getting 5x minus 3 plus uh, 10 over x squared. Now, um, one quick uh, fact about uh, rational functions is when we get a constant over some, uh, uh, I guess, some uh, x over to any um, x to any like function or no x to any exponent it's always just going to be zero so if it's a constant over x to some exponent it always is just going to be zero and that's what we like is when we can be able to get things to cancel out so it's just a constant over an x and that that'll always and it it can be in positive or negative infinity but here so this one will just be zero but um and this is three is simple, but the problem is 5x. It's not over, it's um, multiplied by x. So that's just simply going to go to infinity when we uh, set the limit, or when we use the limit. So the, the limit is infinity, or it means it doesn't exist. B, when we when I multiply it out and then simplify it, um, I get 5 minus 3 over x plus 10 over x to the third. This simply... um. Uh, equals 5 because 3 over x, that's just a constant over uh, x, and that will just equal 0, and this will just equal 0, so um, that it will just end up equaling 5, and this is a horizontal asymptote because um, horizontal asymptotes are usually everything but uh, when it's greater than, when the numerator is greater than, and this would be a, um, this could be a slant asymptote. 
per day. Part B or C, um, I got 5 over x minus 3 over x squared plus 10 uh, over x to the fourth. Um, everything, when I set, when you set the limit to it, everything in this um, function uh, ends up being 0. So the limit is simply 0. So that's uh, number 15. Number 18. So, it's pretty much asking the same thing. So, I always um, set the uh, limit, or not the limit, I always just divide or multiply the entire thing by the, the highest power in, in part A, that's uh, x over to the third. And when I multiply it out and simplify it, I get some um, 3 over x to the third uh, to uh, uh, minus 2 over x squared divided by 3 minus x to the third. So in the, um, in the denominator of the function, this will just equal 0 because that's a constant divided by an x to some power. That's just going to go to infinity, or it's 0 over infinity, so it's just 0. And this is also 0. So then, and also in the denominator, 1 over x to the third is just going to be 0. So what we end up getting is 0 over 3. Is that equal? That equals to 0. Now if we look at what we learned at the very beginning, or the, the, the guidelines of um, um, infinite limits, we know that um, when, a, uh, when there's a, a degree of the um, numerator is greater than, or not the numerator, when the degree of the denominator is um, greater than, so that means the numerator is smaller, it's just going to equal 0, and that proves that this is right. Um, so when we look at this, we we'll, we guess at the very beginning, the, the degree of the numerator and the denominator are equal. So if we follow what the, um, the guidelines tell us, it's just going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. That's what the limit will equal. So we follow it out. We get 3 over x minus 2, and that'll just equal 0 minus 2. And um, 3 minus 1x, and then that'll just be 3 minus 2, uh, 1x. And so we would have predicted that it would have been negative 2 thirds, and that's what it does equal, is negative 2 thirds. That is the limit. For the last part, when we use the guidelines, we know that um, if the, degree is, the numerator is greater than, uh, it's not going to exist. So when we follow it out, it's equal to 0. Uh, but we don't have a constant over a um, some exponent or x to some exponent. We it's multiplied by, so this is going to equal infinity. Infinity, sorry. So what does that mean? Uh, for the bottom, it's just three. So it's infinity over three. Um, does negative infinity? My bad. So. Uh, it's just going to equal negative infinity. And that means, oh, that's a horrible infinity. I didn't know it was wrong. Huh? So that means that it does not exist for the, for, uh, the last one. So that's number 18. Okay, 24. Um, 24 is pretty straightforward. It's just the uh, limit says x approaches infinity 4 plus 3 over x. And since um, 3 over x is just a constant over a, um, an x to some exponent, which is just 1, it's just going to go to 0. So it's just 4 plus 0. So that means that the, um, the limit is 4. And this would be a horizontal asymptote because it's just some number. And it was, and in this case, the degree of the numerator was not one larger than the degree of the denominator. And for 25, the last problem. Um, so, so since this is pretty straightforward too, so we're just multiplying the highest power of the denominator, highest power of x, and we end up getting 5x over 1 plus 3 over x. Um, in this case, though, 
it's not so. The constant over some x it is 5 times x. So right away we can tell, and it's going to negative infinity, so right away we can tell the top is negative infinity. It doesn't really matter what the bottom is, not really. You know, this is just negative infinity over 1, it's just still not going to exist because the element's just going to infinity, it's going on and on, so there's no limit. I hope that helped.